For the financial year ending 30th of June 2017, diversified fund investors enjoyed another strong year of returns, in line with, with our objectives and ahead of expectations. The majority of the returns were sourced in this particular period from equity markets, both here in Australia, globally in the US, and for this particular period from the emerging markets that had a very strong showing. On the flip side, bonds, listed property trusts, and alternatives had a weaker year. This was in stark contrast to bonds and listed property trusts having a much stronger year the year before. The main reason for bonds producing weaker returns in this 12 month period was the action of the central banks signaling higher rates on the horizon. And indeed the Federal Reserve in the US raising rates three times in this particular period. Putting all this together, the combination of strong equity returns and lower bond and listed property trust returns and that most investors will have received returns in the high single digits for the 12 months, which in the context of the volatile environment, the uncertainty around various election results, we feel is another strong year for our investors on their path towards creating long-term wealth. For the quarter, uh, things started to look a little bit more shaky, particularly here at home in the Australian equity market. The two themes of politics and disruption were very uh, strong in terms of which companies and which sectors did well and which did less well. Uh, ever since the federal budget in early May, the big four banks and Macquarie have been under pressure because of the, the bank levy. Um, whereas the potential for disruption through Amazon uh, entering the Australian market has put the skids under a number of retail focused uh, companies here in Australia. And that all together, um, in the, the last quarter, it was very much better if you were an equity investor investing globally and particularly in emerging markets, China and other tech focused companies did very, very well. Whereas back here in Australia, particularly the larger companies had a very weak quarter. Yeah, so as long term valuation driven investors, we tend to be focused on you know, clearly valuation and being willing to be contrarian when expectations get ahead of those valuations. So if you think about the last 12 months, probably the two most volatile um, asset classes in a diversified portfolio were on one hand listed property trusts that experienced a very strong start to the 12 months and then a very weaker period the last six months and emerging market equities that were very weak around the time of the Trump election but then came through very, very strong in 2017 driven by certain technology uh, stocks in China, Taiwan and Korea. So in that environment, we were able to start selling quite um, a lot of Australian listed property trusts from July to October in that financial year as they got overvalued and rotate that money into emerging market equities as they were looking very cheap around the time of the Trump election. That benefited the portfolio again from that longer term creation of wealth. More recently in the, uh, in the financial year, over the last quarter when Australian equity started to look less um, highly valued because of the uncertainty around the, the banking securities, we started to add certain sectors of the Australian equity market to our portfolios. Um, particularly thinking again of those, some of those mid cap securities that will be um, not influenced as much by potentially slowdown in the Australian economy or di disruption from new um, companies coming into the Australian market. As valuation driven investors, with a preparedness to be different, uh, we seek that margin of safety uh, in the areas that we invest in for, our, for our, our investors. That means that sometimes our portfolios look very different from a market cap focused passive investor. And indeed, the particular kind of exposures we have inside of those asset classes, again, can be very different to a market cap focused or ETF type exposure. Putting that all together, there are two main parts to our portfolio. One is more conservative and defensive, that is retaining liquid cash-like investments, seeking uh, a margin of safety and a certainty of returns going forward, waiting for better opportunities to deploy that capital into uh, asset classes that are temporarily cheap. When that happens, we, we tend to act very, very quickly and we'll again look for periods of volatility to actually deploy that capital. 
On the other side of the portfolio, there are some higher conviction strategies that we deploy. But again, while they may be sort of smaller parts of the market, they are areas where based on valuation, we feel we can provide that margin of safety. And things like emerging market equities and emerging market bonds are two examples of that, where time and time again, they tend to be volatile, but in terms of the growth that they are producing compared to the developed world and the yield that they are producing for this uh, level of risk, we feel there are much better opportunities in this part of the emerging market space than in the, the developed market space. So our portfolio is therefore a combination of high conviction, high returning um, asset classes and safer, more defensive um, cash awaiting those opportunities to really deploy capital quickly at times of uncertainty.